morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. Look how we are dressed today. Hey, we did it all for you because you're that special. <laughs> Actually, we did it because we're going to go back to the first place I ever played, and I can't believe it, but my costumes still fit. No, they don't. <laughs> No, they don't. It's been a couple of years. <laughs> it's been a couple of years. I am squeezed into this thing. I can barely, barely breathe in it. We are taking you to the Sahara. And we realized, honestly, we have not set foot in the Sahara since 2015 when our kids were here to visit it when it was called the SLS. That's right. And, and prior to that, of course, the Sahara. And I actually played there. The first time when I got here, I was just, I was scared to death. They had this little show here at the Sahara. Sandy Hackett, Buddy Hackett's uh, son, put the show on. And uh, I was a tiny, 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 tiny part of it. Now, if I was doing it, I'd be a very large part of it. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get ready, because I'm excited about this one. Get ready, because this adventure starts right now. June in Las Vegas this year has been picture-perfect weather-wise, and we were eager to set out on this sunny Sunday morning to catch up with an old friend, the Sahara. Just check out this front facade. They are definitely classing up the neighborhood with this redo. Now, if you haven't been here before, the self-parking is actually around the corner on Paradise. And here we are. Step out of the garage, which is free by the way, and here's your view. Indeed, the strip starts here, and we kind of have goosebumps already. Just down Paradise is the Westgate, which we visited a couple weeks ago. Under the arches, the valet and drop-off. And if we swing around, there's the monorail station. This is the last stop on the line, the north end for the Las Vegas monorail. The monorail route travels almost four miles down to the MGM Grand with seven stations along the way. You really get a great view of the station and the track from up on the parking deck. I'll tell you what, this is a spectacular view this morning with a mountain backdrop. It is Father's Day morning. Now we are going to go explore the Sahara. I think it's years since I've been in here. We are excited to see what's new. So here's the neighborhood, world's largest gift shop, of course, across the street. And there's the Strat. Just a block up the road, there's a Walgreens. And then the new frontage on the Sahara. And there's the boulevard. At the corner is a state-of-the-art LED screen promoting everything you're going to find inside. This little bit of bling really reminds us of old Vegas. And right here on the strip, they're advertising their brand new restaurant row. This shiny new version of the Sahara made its debut in August 2019, just three years ago. And this marquee, along with all the updates you see here, were part of a $150 million renovation. Duck under the marquee, and there's the casino entrance. Now, a quick mention about that 67-story blue-tinted glass tower next door, that's the Fountain Blue. Last year, it was reacquired by its original developers, and a partnership with Marriott was scrapped, and finally, it's being finished. In fact, it's due to open just a year from now in late 2023. Stay tuned, my friends, because the north end of the Strip is really being transformed.
Speaking of transforming, the Portico Share for Sahara has been completely redone. This spacious and classy driveway directly off Las Vegas Boulevard leads you right to the main entrance. Now, if you were here in the past, this is really hard to reconcile with what it used to look like. Okay, well, that's what it looked like when the SLS had it. And of course, what they've done to it since then, it's just, it's an amazing transformation, don't you think? We can't wait to show it to you. But before we go inside, we need to step back in time a little bit and talk about the origins of the Sahara. Uh, the Sahara opened up in October of 1952, actually about a year after I was born. Oh, that's amazing. It is. I figured that all out. <laughs> that it was the sixth resort to open on the Strip, way up on the north end, and during the 50s, it was the hopping place to be. It was such a cool place. It had an African theme, camels, Sahara Desert. It was just an amazing place, and I'll tell you what, the entertainment back then was uh, uh, absolutely superb. Yeah, we're going to show you a little bit of that soon, so stay tuned for that. Right. But by the 1960s, with the opening of Caesars Palace, the MGM Grand, and the International, it already started to wane in popularity, and a lot of the high rollers, the gamblers, and even the entertainers were going to those properties instead of the Sahara. So yeah, uh, it struggled after that unfortunately, for decades. Well, so Circus Circus was still there, but you know, a lot of the other ones, like the, uh, uh, well, a lot of them just closed up, and Sahara was sort of stuck there all by itself. On the north end of the Strip, and you know that persisted for more than 50 years to but tell the But the, the Riviera was still there, and, and the Westward Ho, but it just it didn't have the same appeal as what they had down Center Strip. Yes. Yeah. So... By the 90s, it changed hands, and actually you may remember, if you were here during that decade, that we had the NASCAR Cafe, there was a partnership with NASCAR, and we actually had a roller coaster out front There was the a roller Sahara. coaster, and it's not there no more. No, it got dismantled. That's but, right. Um, it just goes to show in Vegas, you know, you blink and it changes. Yeah. So, um, But by... 2011, in May of 2011, the owners had decided it was no longer economically viable and the Sahara closed its doors. But uh, that opened up something for the locals and for other people that wanted a little nostalgia from uh, Las Vegas. And we're going to show a little bit of that uh, coming up right up after this, right? Yes, so stay tuned for a little trip down memory lane with us. In July 2011, two months after the Sahara closed its doors, we attended the largest liquidation sale in Las Vegas history. And what an opportunity it was. At the start, there were 600,000 items for sale to the public. Our son Scott got to play dealer. And I got to stand on stage at the Casbar Theater where I had once performed for one last time. We also had access to back of the house, behind the cashier's cage, and other areas the public would never normally get to see. And we were even allowed to go upstairs to the suites. <laughs> Not exactly company ready, is it? The coolest thing about it, though, was the opportunity to capture the view in every direction, a time capsule of what Las Vegas looked like in the summer of 2011. Notice that big Sahara sign out front. Well, guess what? Four years later, we saw it at the Neon Museum, where it still lives to this day. Fast forward to the present and let's look at the newly reborn Sahara. In 2018, after several owner and name changes, the property was sold to Reno businessman Alex Morello and he set out to bring it back to life. The 60,000 square foot casino has been outfitted with new lighting, carpeting, and a bright and modern layout. With the gambler's renewed interest in poker, a poker room was added in 2020. 
and the Infinity Rewards program is good here as well as at its sister property, the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno. Wow, this new version of the Casbar is a far cry from the venue I remember famous for its legendary live music. This stylish lounge has inviting seating areas, a cozy fireplace, and a beautiful hidden back room. plus craft cocktails and daily happy hour specials. Upstairs from the casino is convention and meeting space and a brand new 450 seat theater specially built for the Magic Mike Live show. Magic Mike Live is the brainchild of actor Channing Tatum, a dazzling extravaganza of dance, music, and acrobatics based on hit movies. And it opened right here last August. The Sahara Las Vegas lobby is where you can really see the transformation Marilla had in mind. The materials used in here, the colors, the light, it all promises a memorable stay. The floor inlays are inspired by lamps from the original Sahara and they are absolutely gorgeous close up. The check-in experience is smooth and modern with state-of-the-art registration systems. The Sahara has 1,615 rooms and suites in three towers, all refreshed for the grand reopening. The decor is a blend of modern and nostalgic, and each tower has its own unique style. There is a lot going on in this lobby area. This hologram wall is state of the art and absolutely mesmerizing. Approaching from the casino, here's your obligatory Starbucks doing a brisk business on this Sunday morning. And later in the day, stop in at Prendy for focaccia, cookies, or gelato. There's a convenient enterprise car rental just across from registration. And here's your access to the Las Vegas monorail. What we love in here is the nostalgic factor. Just check out this little lounge with this fab library wall. Whoever put this thing together was a genius. They make us want to explore every single shelf. And conveniently located near the lobby, ETC has everything from a toothbrush to a salty snack to logo souvenirs and so much more. And at last, here's the history that we've been looking for. People talk about the sands, but entertainment here at the Sahara is every bit as legendary. Back in 1954, Louis Prima started in the lounge and became one of the most popular late night attractions on the Strip. Just look at the names and faces of who performed in the Congo Room, who recorded live albums here, and who stayed here during the golden years like the 50s and the 60s. <laughs> Let me tell you folks, these photos are priceless to an old timer like me. Sahara's Lobby also has a bar, a really classy bar, called the Tangier. It's described as a classic Vegas lounge with world-class selection of bourbon, scotch, and cognac. <laughs> we really like this place a lot.
From the inside, let's take a look at that restaurant row. Sahara is the new West Coast home for Chickies and Pete's, a Philadelphia favorite and voted by ESPN as the number one sports bar in North America. This space is huge, 8,000 square feet and more than 50 TV screens. The Noodle Den features northern Chinese dishes, including hand-pulled noodles and dumplings from Chef Sam. Not quite ready, but coming soon is Bala Italian Soul, a new culinary concept from award-winning chef Sean McLean. And this is Bizarre Meat, described as a breathtaking experience and a dining venue that has earned endless accolades and awards for its excellence. Now here's a fun fact. This is the only remaining restaurant from the time when this property was the SLS. Sahara also has a cozy breakfast and lunch spot on the casino floor called Zephyr's Cafe. On your way to the lobby is Uno Mas, where prep for the day is already underway in the open kitchen. This is the spot for authentic street tacos, where everything is made from scratch and best of Las Vegas margaritas. Around the Las Vegas Valley, we're seeing a lot of signage for this, the Azillo Ultra Pool, just unveiled in September of last year. We didn't have access to the pool deck, but we did get a peek through the entry doors and surprisingly from the parking deck elevator. The Azillo Pool Deck is 35,000 square feet with Moroccan decor and 10,000 square feet of LED screens. This place looks absolutely fantastic. The other pool on property is the Alexandria Rooftop Pool, exclusive to guests of that tower. From the website, it looks elegant and serene. This lounge, called the Paradise Lounge, is also exclusive to the Alexandria Tower guests, and we just loved it. It's spacious, warm, and comfortable with really unique art pieces. We can see why this tower has received the AAA Four Diamond Award. Let me just say, I love what the Morello Group did with the Sahara. I love that beautiful lobby with all the marble. I love the carpet. I thought the lounges were beautiful. I, I, I just big thumbs up with all the public areas that we could see. I really like it. The Casbar Lounge, my gosh, I, you wouldn't even recognize it. Oh, you I want to sit by the fireplace and have like a dram of something. <laughs> yeah, back then, I'll tell you, that was the place, one of the little lounges where you actually saw people that should have been in the main, main showroom, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, big names, you're yeah. right. Just a, a, an amazing transformation. Yeah, so Dale has a little, another story about entertainment, a legendary piece of entertainment at the Sahara. There's a lot of good things about being in Las Vegas back then, but one of the really cool things was, was Labor Day because at that time, Jerry Lewis's telethon was at the Sahara for many, many years. Yeah, probably about 15 years in total in the 70s, 80s, and even in the 90s. Yeah, I think yeah. he moved at one other time, and, the, but and I came th back. he came back, yeah. yeah. So my little tribe of folks decided we were going to go down and check it out. Guess what? It was a two-hour wait outside. The line went all around Sahara and to the Las Vegas Boulevard and around on that even. And uh, what they would do is they would change the uh, audience every hour. So you had to wait for that hour to see how many more people they were going to get in. I mean, once they did that, there was a lot of people that went in and you moved up the line very quickly. But... <laughs> If you went in there, they gave you a little badge, and I still have that badge. I'm going to show you a picture of it right now. It was just a, a keepsake of back then, and it, it was amazing. So let me tell you, you get into the telethon. It was in like a ballroom. It wasn't in the showroom. It was just a small little area and uh, just, just some regular old folding chairs for the folks to sit on. And guess who was performing when our hour came up? It was Wayne Newton. It was one of the greatest nights of my life to see 
this and to see Jerry Lewis in his prime and to just see a part of, uh, of Las Vegas history that people all around the world were watching at that time live. And the cool thing about what Dale's telling you is Wayne Newton was the Midnight Idol then, so this was after his midnight show, he came over. So this was in the wee hours of oh, the yeah, morning. Oh, we, yeah, we were there. That, and honestly, you were seeing this. the audiences never never waned. They, it was just a constant, constant flow of 100 people. Or, I mean, uh, 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 after an hour, they would bring in more people. I, didn't, I don't know how the, the amount was, but it wasn't 100. <laughs> it was, sure was more. more. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, isn't that a cool story? I wish I had been part of that little piece of history. <laughs> that would be, honestly, it would have been fun. All right, my friends, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these folks uh, in our beautiful donned out outfits, Paula. Hey, thanks for being with us on this little walk down memory lane. We love doing these kind where we can mesh the old and the new. And I would encourage you, pop in on the Sahara. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>